Well, hello guys, que pasa? What's up? Antonio Serrano here and today I have a magical tip just for you. In this case, I'm going to talk about a topic that is not quite interesting to me if we talk about it generally, but specifically talking about magical performances and shows is something that I always struggle with and it is clothes, the outfit, the outfit. What clothes are you going to be wearing when you perform your show? Um, I never had like a, a, an image, I never had like this is my jacket or this is my thing, sometimes I wear a t-shirt with a vest, without the vest, sometimes with a jacket and that's something that I'm struggling with, like having an image, like this is the image that people see this and they automatically think about me, right? I have a lot of things like that, like people see a monkey, they think about me, they see a rubber chicken, they think about me, or a lot of the times uh, kids have seen, for example, in a show like a mic stand uh, for a singer or something like that and they, um, the parents said to me, we were yesterday at a concert and my kid saw a mic stand and he was, oh, um, Mav Antonio is going to perform here. <laughs> and I'm like, no, because most magicians around here, and I would say everywhere, they usually use um, a headset, right? Some kind of headset or a lapel mic. And I really feel comfortable with the handheld mic and the mic stand. I love the image, the, um, the idea behind it, like a stand-up comedian, something like that, the vintage kind of look to it, so I love that. And that's an image, but I don't have a clothing or an outfit image. So that's something that I'm working on and I would love to have in the future, but it's quite difficult to commit. It's quite difficult to commit to a particular style of clothing and I'm going to explain you why. I'm going to give you right now my top five kind of ideas uh, for you to have in mind before choosing your clothing, okay? Let's take a look at the first one. This is extremely obvious. I think that I shouldn't even have to say this, but the most important thing in order to choose your clothes is your character. As simple as that. You must have extremely clear what your character is, right? You should know what, who you are, right? If you don't know who you are as a performer, am I a funny guy? Am I a mysterious guy? Am I like a storyteller? I am, I, I am something, I am someone rude. I am a calm, relaxed magician. If you don't know what character you are trying to put across, you don't know how to dress it, right? You must know your character. Could you imagine uh, like going to a tailor or something like that for a musical? I have a musical and I need the costume for the main character. And the tailor asks you, okay, uh, talk to me about the main character. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> this guy has any kind of job. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea about the character. The tailor couldn't possibly uh, saw a, a costume for you because you don't know what the character is. So you need to make sure what your character is, right? It's great. If you think about any good character, an interesting character, for example, I don't know, uh, Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory. If you think about a very, very good character, you automatically know how to dress him and you could even come up with a magical act. Imagine that you are Sheldon Cooper. What tricks would Sheldon Cooper do in a magic show? It's quite, quite easy to think about ideas because the character is extremely polished. The reason why most magicians struggle uh, thinking about the outfit and what tricks should I put in my show is basically that the character is not polished, so everything could work. Every outfit could work, every trick could work, right? And as Pop Hayden says, yeah, you can do any trick you want, but you must know what your character is to put your character in the specific situations so that person, the character, needs to do the trick. Right? Some magicians say, I'm not going to perform that trick ever because it doesn't suit my character. And he's like, no, you have to think about in what situations would my character do this, right? And that way you can do everything. But the first thing is to have your character extremely well established. Something very important that I have to tell you. Uh, a lot of the times when we compare ourselves with, uh, another magi with other magicians, we have we are not sure about our characters. And it is basically because I tend to compare myself with magicians that have very clear and conceive and conceivable characters. For example, Ruby Cobby. Ruby Cobby is a scientist. It's a character that even has like a profession, like a job. 
a scientist or Mackin, this crazy guy that loves thick newtons and all that stuff. I always compare myself Jeff Hobson, a great character, like this kind of, I almost would say like kind of gay character, things like that. I always compare with those guys that have very strict and, and polished characters. You don't need to have a character with so many layers, so many um, details to decide your outfit. You could simply say, okay, I am a funny guy. I am a funny guy. My clothing has to shout out funny. That's basically it. You can add more details. The more details you add to, the, to your character, the best. But one of the things that stops me from choosing my own outfit is that I, I'm always thinking to myself, I always say to myself, I don't have a polished character. I'm not going to stick to an outfit yet because I need to have like a more polished character. No, 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 it's, it's not, it's very soon. It's no, 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 it's, it's too, too, too soon, too soon, too soon. I need to polish my character a bit more. No, you do it. Okay, my character is this right now. And this is the way that I'm going to be dressed right now. And in the future, maybe I add some bits, some new ideas to my character. But you have to try, right? And that's something that I'm trying to do. It's difficult, but we have to do it together, okay? Help me, please help me. Okay, this second point is quite related to the first one. And let me tell you that all of these ideas that I have about uh, how to choose your outfit are uh, extremely related, but the first two points are the most important ones. The first one was your character, and the second one is your material. The tricks, jokes, routines that you are going to be doing. You have to think about what objects am I using in my show? What things am I using in my show? And I discover that a lot of the times I always like to dress up in a very elegant way, and I would say almost vintage way, like I love like uh, old style, old vintage style uh, suits, uh, sometimes even with a vest. I love the black and white uh, shoes, spats, I think they are called, something like that. I love that style, but then I look at my set and I say everything is metal, everything is chrome, my, my mm, suitcase is not a vintage suitcase, it's quite modern, it's a tool, um, like a mm, case for tools, so doesn't doesn't make sense and the tricks that I do the things that I use in my show are everyday things the tablecloth that I have for my for my tables are kitchen cloths and for my chocolate routine I use a tin foil bowl and I use a lot of um, toys things that you can find in normal stores I use completely normal objects so it doesn't make sense that I am dressing like this character like a weird character that comes from another time and my set is modern, like the set comes from the future, but the things that I'm doing are in the present, right? The objects are normal, normal everyday objects. In the present, the clothes are from the past, <laughs> and the set looks like kind of futuristic, something like that. So you have to keep in mind those things, right? So right now, I still have the same set, but I take away the chrome parts, which are the things that make it look more modern, more futuristic, so I, I everything is black. Um, then I have the everyday objects, which is something that I love in magical performing, using things that are normal and non-gimmick, and my clothing are normal, everyday clothes. I normally perform with normal trousers or even jeans, a shirt or a t-shirt and a jacket. I like to, to be uh, dressed in a way that you can see that I am the magician, but if you see someone walking like that through this, uh, down the street, you wouldn't go like, oh my god, what is this guy dressing? No, I am wearing normal everyday clothes that you can see, like the objects that I use in my show. So this is extremely important. If you have a clear idea of your character and the tricks, the routines that your character are going to do, you have there a lot of detail to decide the clothes that you are going to wear. Okay, the next tip, this is very interesting, and it is think about the place where you normally perform, right? You must belong in those places. You shouldn't be performing like in a very posh um, country club or something like that, I don't know, in a very high stand, very high standard country club or something like that, and you are wearing like a smelly t-shirt and some shorts. No, this is my style, this is my character, yeah but they are not paying you for that. And, and you can have like a messy character sort of wearing a jacket, wearing a suit. And we go back to the theory of thinking about a series characters. For example, Sheldon Cooper. Sheldon Cooper normally wears the same kind of clothes, but in some shows 
he wears extremely outrageous clothing, like costumes, uh, uh, suits, something like that, because he is put in the situation where he needs to. So this is the same thing. If you are performing at a place where you are going to be better look at, if you are, are dressing up or dressing down, uh, you have to think about a situation, an excuse for your character to dress that way. For example, I perform in a very, very interesting place, a small pub, theater bar with a, uh, bar with a small stage. It is a, one of the best places that I've ever performed uh, magic quite near in my, in my area. And it's kind of decorated like a vintage place. And every time that I perform there, it's like a cabaret night. So there is like a singer, a piano player, a dancer, and everything is like vintage and all that stuff. When I go there, when I go there, I change my case and I use the case that I normally use for close-up magic because it is a vintage case and I change my clothing. I use the vintage clothes that I, that I use in the past and now they match with the um, atmosphere and instead of bringing my set that is chrome and things and kind of futuristic or black right now that I change it, I, I, get, I got some stools there, some stools, some tables and I put all of my things there so everything makes sense. And I can have the same character, I can have the same feel about my magic and my routines, but now I belong in the place. Because you can have a very interesting character, you can be very funny, you can be very charming, very mysterious, but if people take a look at the place and then they look at you and they have like the sensation of you are not in the right place, it's quite difficult to connect. It's quite difficult to connect where, when the plays and the performer, it's like they are looking at you like, yeah, someone made a horrible, horrible, big booking error, error. <laughs> right? It's like you don't want people to be watching your show thinking that the person that booked you, book you made a horrible mistake. So uh, be very conscious about the place where you perform, try, right? And try to come up with a solution to fit the venue and to make sure that your character stays the same. Because remember, your character is always the same even though the clothes can change, the set can change, the only thing you have to think about is what is the situation now? What is my character going through to change his clothes, to change anything, okay? Let's take a look at the next tip. Okay, this next tip is quite interesting. We talked previously about the material, the routines that you perform, and I was talking about the feel of your routines. What objects do you do? What routines do you do? And how they can be more or less cohesive with your clothing and your set, right? In this case, you have to keep in mind the method, the thing behind those routines. For example, if I am going to perform um, Chop Cup, I want to have jean style back pocket. I don't like to do back pocket steals with trouser pockets. You know what I mean? Normally trouser pockets have like a slit and a bag inside and uh, jean, jeans pockets they are like a piece of fabric uh, attached to the back. So they, for me they are much easier to get into because sometimes with trouser pockets you get inside, you pull out the load and you turn around the back of the pocket that is inside the suit uh, trousers. So um, if I'm going to perform chop cup, I need a pair of pants or trousers that have that very specific type of back pocket. If I am performing, for example, my version of uh, Century Silks, I need to have a pair of trousers that have a couple of pockets um, in each pocket in the side of my trousers. If I am performing um, the uh, appearing bottle from the silk, I need to wear a jacket, obviously, and it is preferable if I am wearing a tuck-in shirt, right? I can do it with a shirt, but uh, with a t-shirt, but it's much better if I have a shirt tucked in. So there are a lot of routines that affect the clothing that you are wearing. So you must keep that in mind, and obviously, pockets. There are some routines that you can perform having everything uh, inside the case and for other routines you must have some things on you to steal, to ditch, things like that. I've told you, I have told you a lot of times that one of the things that I love the most about some of my, of my routines is that I have everything on me. Like I walk on the stage and I can make a bottle appear with a lot of gags, I can make my whole silk routine, I can do entire uh, rope routines 
or um, card sequences just with the things that I have on me and that's something that I am extremely proud of. And for that, to be able to do that, you must be very conscious about the clothing that you use and the set list that you are going to perform. Because, for example, to do my century, uh, my 20th century silks, it's better to use a, trou a suit trouser, but for my chop cup, it's better to use a jeans, right? So I know that those tricks cannot go in the same show. And I know that the aesthetics of those shows have to, have to change because of the clothes that I'm wearing, because of the trousers in this case that I'm wearing, okay? So keep in mind your pocket management, the number of pockets that you need, the position where you need those pockets, and everything else clothing related according to method. Okay guys, and this is the last tip and it's quite interesting, a very, very interesting tip. When you are choosing the clothes that you are going to wear performing, you must feel comfortable and confident. As simple as that. I have told you that I have struggled a lot of time um, thinking about the clothing that I'm going to use. I'm, I want to have an image and this is, I, I want to wear always the same clothes, but I don't know how because for certain routines I need this and in certain venues I don't have a place to change and I don't want to be like the whole afternoon wearing these clothes. So I always struggle with that and I think that at some point in my career I give more importance to the image of the show and how people saw me as a magician than about my mm, comfort, right? And it is impossible to perform a good show if you are not comfortable, right? It is impossible, impossible to perform a good show if you are not confident. If you are like moving your jacket like that and you are pulling your trousers up and you are wearing a shirt and you feel like guilty with your shirt, like it is not in the right position. and you must be comfortable and confident. Mario the Maker, great magician, he says in a podcast that he hates when a magician says to him, oh, today I am performing with these shoes because I love how, this, how, I love how these shoes look, but I normally feel more comfortable when I perform with my dance shoes, right? Sports shoes. And Mario says, so why the hell are you not performing with those shoes? If you feel more comfortable with those shoes, perform with those shoes. Maybe, maybe they don't fit with the rest of your clothing or with your show. It doesn't matter. Think about a way of putting them in, your sh in the show. If, they, if that decision, if the decision of the shoes are making you uncomfortable, you don't know how to act, you don't know what to do, when you are not wearing those shoes, you feel weird, you start with the shoes because those are things that you need to be comfortable with the shoes and now you build your entire show around those shoes. And this may sound crazy, this may sound weird, but you don't know, you don't know the amounts of shows that I have created from just the tiniest decision that I made. It's like, I need to wear this shirt for this show. I need to wear this t-shirt for this show. I need to wear this or I need to wear that. I made that decision and all of the other decisions related to the show are going to be, ta are going to be taken, taking in account that this idea is not going to be changed, right? As simple as that. Okay, guys, so I hope that you find this information useful. I would, like, I would love to know your thoughts about outfit, clothing for magicians and all this stuff, so please leave a comment, subscribe, and as always, I would see you in a near future. Bye there.